I'm Clint, and it's time for another portfolio review and paint over on this episode of Swatches. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the artwork of S. Yoshiko. She sent me a message on YouTube asking me for some feedback on our artwork, and that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be taking a look at some sampling of her artwork, identify the strengths and weaknesses, then jump into Photoshop where we have a paint over already finished. To save time, I've already done it. We'll talk through why I did what I did, why it encapsulates a lot of the issues that she's facing in her artwork all around, and you guys pay attention because a lot of you asking for reviews and feedback are facing the same challenges that she is in hers. So let's jump over and see what she's done. I've already gone out and downloaded 10 images from her gallery as a sample of her artwork. If you'd like to see the rest of it, feel free to follow the link below and check it out yourself. Now let's look at these 10 images. Most of her images were character based. So you see a lot of figures in here. She also does a fair number of uh, celebrity portraits, fan art, You've got a couple of book covers, I believe, that she's done. Aside from that, I don't know who a lot of these characters are. I don't know if they're original creations or, or someone else's. So what are the things that I'm seeing immediately when looking at this? Well, one is the drawing is good. That is the anatomical perspective, proportional accuracy of the characters is good the right size of things, the placement of the things in the scene are accurate. I like that she builds the scene out. This could have just been a scene of the two of them and had a blank background, but she's not afraid to build out the scene, give an interior, give an exterior, give a background. So I applaud that. What are some of the things that aren't working so well? Well, having looked through this artwork, I would say two different things. One is the skin tones, and the other one is lighting, and there's a correlation between the two of those. So take this guy as an example. The skin tone is very bland. It's sort of a one tone. Basically, there's one brown tone, and it's either lighter or it's darker, and it might change in vibrancy a little bit, but there's none of the feeling of flesh. There's no feeling of blood under that skin. It, it just feels washed out. Going down the line, let's see. Again, same sort of thing. The flesh feels sort of just airbrushed, artificial, and washed out. A little less here, but again, essentially one color, variations of that one color, lighter, darker, a little more vibrant, a little less vibrant. I think that this could be pushed a lot. Now that's what we'll be looking at the paint over. Now aside from that, what's another thing? And the other thing is lighting. Lighting could drastically, I'd say the skin tone and the lighting combined, these two things, if she was to implement these two changes, would drastically upgrade her artwork. It would take it to a distinctly different level. The lighting is ambiguous. It doesn't help build the scene. It doesn't help tell the scene. And the tiger, for instance, I can't tell where the light source is on the tiger. Where's the light source? I have no idea. If you can define a light in your scene, then that can tell you so much more about the scene. Remember this. The drawing tells you what's in the scene. The lighting tells you how to feel about it. Okay, the lighting dictates the mood the drawing dictates the subject. Right now, she's telling us the subject and she tells it well, but the lighting is not telling us the mood. What is this about? How do I feel about this? Particularly down with these. Good scene, accuracy. I like the costume design. I like the fact that she's gone all out with the background. The problem is, it is about as bland of a lighting scenario as you can possibly have. This has huge potential to being a really cool scene if you could let the lights in the scene be the light source. So imagine that whatever this uh, ambiguous front light is was gone. 
now render the scene as if the only lights you have are the actual lights you see. So those two main things, skin tones, lighting, and the third minor issue would just be the airbrushiness. Uh, this scene in particular, everything's kind of out of focus, and you need to realize that there is a difference between painting something so it looks out of focus and just using a fuzzy brush. Be a little more precise on how you render things that are hazy or things that are sharp. And now let's jump into Photoshop and take a look at the paint over. As I mentioned, I already created the paint over of this image to save time. I'll flip it on here in a second. You can see what I was talking about. But I chose this image because of the skin tone issue. The problem is that the face is very washed out. It's important to remember that there is a lot of color in skin. Skin is not one tone. Now, this is a common problem. This is not something that she's the only person that has this issue. I mean, I have this issue. I try to do it less now because I'm aware of it, but everybody goes through this. Uh, I think one of the reasons is that as a child, you're given a crayon box and you know, okay, pink is for skin. And you just get in your head, this is this color, leaves are green, sky is blue, skin is pink. If you're, you know, Caucasian, obviously. And as you get better, you have to unlearn that and realize sky can be black, it can be blue, it can be orange, it can be, you know, violet. So, and the same thing as skin, just hold your hand up and look at it and see, there are tones that are pinkish, and there are tones that are greenish, and there are tones that are, are bluish or grayish, and there's specular lights that go yellowish or, or, you know, pale or white or whatever. So you need to be mindful of all those colors and try to build those up. Now I'll minimize this back down. Now I will flip on the finished paint over. And I'll do a flip on and off so you can look at the change there. To me, this is the idea of a character. This is a concept of a character. But when you can really fill out that skin tone, all of a sudden it feels like, oh, this is a guy. This is a real dude. There is a personhood, a character behind this face. So, major things that happen. One is a lot more color. Let's really zoom in here. Take a look at some of this color. We've got oranges, we've got violets, we've got greens, we've got pinks, we've got a little blue down here, we've got browns, we've got tans, we've got some uh, more kind of the reddish tone, orangish tone, and combined all that together and it feels like a lot more like real skin. Now, I'm not saying that this image is finished. If it was mine, I'd even keep working on it. I, I'd work out some of the details and, and basically uh, work on some of the brush strokes and really finesse it. But this is the direction that I would be talking about. Other things that happen. Making it consistent throughout the whole thing. The background. Just being mindful of the entire value scheme and color scheme. One of the problems here is the head sort of melts into the background. If it wasn't for this little rim light on some of the hairs around the head, the hair would basically blend into the background, which isn't necessary. And the issue that I have with that is that you get the idea that there is a light hitting the hair all the way around, but that doesn't apply to anything else in the scene. So I'd say there's a better solution than the little edgy light that if you're not going to make it consistent. You could make it consistent by really making that background brighter as if there was a light right behind him, but it seems a little unnecessary. And this way, you simply raise the entire value of the background a bit so that the dark hair stands out. Another issue is with the hair. The hair 
has a tendency to look very wiry very easily if you render most of it with these individual strands. Uh, you want to think of hair in units as this group of hair, this group of hair, this group of hair. They have a tendency to create, uh, say, ribbons of hair, little clumps, little ribbons. And what you want to do is render that one and then pull off a couple of individual strands from that for the detail. But don't make the individual strands all of the detail. Focus on the ribbons of hair first and then print in a couple of strands just for extra. Another thing to remember is it's usually a good idea to think of hair as smoke. It should be a little softer, a little more flowing. Uh, certainly here on the edge. I really soften the edge of the hair up a lot so that it has a, a different feel to it than the skin and from the crown and from the other elements. I did make the light a bit more consistent across the scene. So the crown was also played down in shadow since only the top of it is catching the light. I worked with the collar down here. I did tone down all of the fur from his cloak. I'm not saying this cloak is finished. This cloak is not finished. I only toned that down so the face would stand out. If you wanted to finish this scene, I'd say go in there and work on all the fur. I didn't because that's not what this video is about. So I'm just saying it would need to be done. I'm not doing it right now because that's not what we're talking about. So what was the first thing that I did? First thing that I did was create a normal layer over top of the, her original and started putting in some flesh tones to tone down the whiteness of the current skin tone. And that is what we have here. Basically toning down all those lights and picking more pure tones than what she originally had. But you might be thinking, how do I know what tones to use? How do I know where to put those tones? Well, that's where references really come in handy. For this image, I referenced a capture that I grabbed of Hugh Laurie from the uh, TV show House. Uh, there was a particular shot in the show, and I thought, man, he's got really good skin tones on this scene. So I paused it. I took a snapshot of it. Uh, obviously, I have no rights to this. I do not own the House character and. Uh, this is a celebrity. So, I mean, look at this. It's kind of fuzzy, so pardon that. But wonderful skin tones in here. Look at all these beautiful violets and pinks around the eye. You've got green tones over here. You've got all these bluish and green tones and gray tones around the chin and the hair. You've got the reddish tone there towards the, the tip of the nose. Violets and pink tones in the mouth. So this would be an excellent one for this lighting situation. As the lighting situation changes, of course, the skin tone changes. Here's an example of how skin tone changes depending on the lighting. I did not create this. I have no ownership of this. This was created by Lee Perry Smith. He owns the right to this. Uh, I'm not making that claim. But he does an excellent job with his 3D render here of how skin tone changes. Now, the original artwork that she did of her king sort of fit in this range where very washed out colors but that only generally happens if the light is very close to the subject and it just bleaches out all the tone but that's not ideal if you want this really realistic sort of portrait beautiful artwork now using this reference of Mr. Lari here I did put in the basic uh, tones to bring down the values of the original. Normal layer, toning it all down. And making sure things are, are staying more pure. In my palette, I keep the normal palette that it has plus this secondary palette, and I made this one custom, which is all these normal colors but at 50% vibrancy, which I find to fit a more natural lighting and color scheme after all this was set, the highlights, the specular lights on the skin, were then put in. But they should be the exception. They shouldn't be everywhere. Take a look at the reference here. 
most of the skin tone is within a value of two of each other. Uh, then you have these couple of spots where right along there, here, along this fold, along the creases, angle changes, you've got a couple of lights, but you don't want to go overboard with it. So that's what we got on the next layer. And looking at the same spots, okay, where is the lighting hitting on his? Where is it picking up the lights? Where is it picking those up? Because I'll just make those happen over here too. Okay, so putting in specular lights, starts building up the skin tone, giving it a little reflectivity there. And then details. The details, I went back one more time and added some more color. Added more color along here. Because skin has a translucency. The light will go into the skin. It will bounce around, hitting some of the warm tones underneath the, the top of the skin and light those up, which is where you get these nice warm tones like this, right in here. It's where the, the light isn't hitting the skin and coming directly off. It's kind of coming in at an angle, and it's lighting it up that way. Other details pay attention to in this situation. One is toning down the eyes. The eyes are white in this, in which case they should have a little shadow to them. So those were toned down. The light at the bottom of the eye here gives the idea that there is an under light, a secondary light coming up from underneath giving that, that reflection. But there is no light indicated on the rest of the scene. It doesn't affect anything else. So instead I played that down. So the eyes were a little more accurate to the lighting scenario. Next, I softened out the dark edges of his iris. Eyes don't have a razor sharp edge. It's usually a good idea to soften them a little bit. And that's what you can see here. Just softened out the edge a little bit, a little more painterly, and took down that highlight. A lot of pinks and violets around the eyes because the capillaries, the, the blood vessels, are really close to the, the surface of the skin in that area. Okay, other things to pay attention to. You usually have a green tone, gray tone, or blue tone in the eyebrows and the edges of the hair. A lot more than you would naturally think, but if you look at your references, look at this. This is very gray. This is very green. It's got a lot of cool tones, green tones in it. So be sure to put plenty of those in there if the lighting situation calls for it. Now on the crown, I made the crown a lot darker and I suggest you doing that. It has to do with the reflectivity of the surface. This metal has a higher fall off. That is, it goes from dark, 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 a little mid-tone, highlight. Whereas something that's more matte will go little highlight, lots of mid-tone, a little dark. And skin is more matte than this crown is. So the mount, the crown breaks into highlight on this end and almost everything else is dark with very little mid-tone. The skin is lots of mid-tone, a little light, a little dark. Doesn't have a tendency to go black very easy. Doesn't have a tendency to go white very easy. So it kind of sits in the middle. Keeping that in mind, added some distinct highlights to this along the top and played down the rest of it. Same thing uh, down here on this little collar. Basically just making the lighting more consistent. Instead of being lit by the front, it's being lit by the top and his head is shadowing the rest of it. One of the last things I want to mention is don't jump so quickly to white. Um, skin does not have a tendency, like I said, to jump to white highlights very easy unless there is a really bright light really close to the skin. In conclusion, what do I suggest for her? Well, for her and anyone else who recognizes the same issues, the same kind of artwork in their artwork, I would say really play with your skin tones. Don't let them go white and bleached or washed out. 
Uh, don't think of them as one tone. Think of them as an entire spectrum of colors and look for those colors and start building up a database of references that you can look at and say, okay, well, I need to see what sort of skin tones show up under this lighting or that lighting. And, you know, if they're of this nationality, what skin tones is it? If they're of that nationality, what skin tones? So pay attention to that and think about your lighting. It'll be a little more uh, intentional about with your lighting and how you're using that to convey the scene. And I really expect if she starts doing this, then there will be a dramatic uh, quality increase in her artwork. And I wish her the best. And for everyone else, if you're interested in having your portfolio or a particular image reviewed, then all you need to do is leave me a link to your portfolio or image in a message below. And I will put that in the list. I don't come with a first come, first serve. It is a whatever I want to talk about. So I will glance through your artwork. I will add it to a list. And when I have the time or inclination to do another video, yours might be in it. If you like this video, then please subscribe. I do have some videos to purchase. I want to link below as well as an ebook, the 10 most common mistakes in digital painting and how to correct them. And until next time, keep drawing.